Last week, Ghost dropped a brand new song on us called Rats that features a really dope little guitar solo. So on today's episode of Weekend Wank Shop, we're going to break it down piece by piece and figure out what makes it so flippin' awesome. Check it out. Greetings ladies and ghouls and welcome to a brand new installment of Weekend Wang Shop. Here's your best buddy, Uncle Ben. Most of you guys know that I've been obsessed with Ghost ever since I heard Opus Eponymous whenever it came out a few years ago. So every time they drop a new tune, I'm always really excited about it. They put out the video of Rats last week. And I gotta say, I really enjoy the tune. It's got some really cool riffs and I love that outro. And it's got a really dope solo in there. As soon as I heard it, I was like, I've gotta learn this and cover it on the show. It's a bit more challenging to play than your typical ghost guitar solo, and it's got some really cool bends and phrasing ideas and stuff that we'll check out. Before we get into it, let's hear it again at Step Papa Speed. <laughs> And as always, you guys can find a full tab for this week's episode over on my Instagram page. Be sure to give me a follow over there at Ben Eller Guitars. Find the tab for this week's lesson, then upload a video of yourself shredding through it, along with the hashtag Weekend Wank Shop. First things first, be sure to get your guitar in the right tuning to play this song. Like a lot of ghost tunes, it is tuned down to D standard, or as I know it, sad but tuning. It means you gotta be tuning your guitar from low to high here, D. G, C, F, A, D. Uh, I usually like to use just a standard, you know, 10 through 46 set of strings on a Strat Scalings guitar for this tuning. We're going to start off by playing this phrase on our B string here, starting off on the third fret. Now what you're going to do is you're going to pick that note and then hammer on to fret number five. After you do the hammer on, pick that note two more times. After this, you're going to play the 3rd fret B again, this time pulling off to open. And then play that 5th fret B string one more time. So now you have this. Then you have this lick. This is me hitting that 5th fret B two more times. 3rd fret, hammer on to 5. Pull off to 3. Pull off to open. So that's... So now on the B string you've played this. Then on the high E string here, we're going to play the 3rd fret. That was me playing the 3rd fret once, twice, three times a lady. And then you're going to play the 2nd fret on the high E, pulling to open. And then play the 3rd fret B. It's a very rhythmic phrase. Be sure to pay close attention to the timing there. And then you get this section that kind of creeps up the B string and then onto the E string. Now, I've seen some people play this lick kind of more in the 7th position right here. Um, it's entirely guesswork at this point because we don't have any live footage of the band playing this song yet. But it sounds to me like he's definitely playing this across the B string. The timbre of the first note sounds like an open string. It doesn't sound like a thick fretted note, you know what I mean? And plus two, whenever you play this lick in a position, like I see some people doing it, you get a whole bunch of different timbres because there's so many different string changes. Whereas whenever you play it across the B string, then leaping onto the E string, you only have that change of timbre once, which is what it sounds more like to me on the record. Again, that's, you know, sleuth stuff, but it makes sense to me. Here's how the lick goes. Good little alternate picking workout. I'm going to start off with the B open, and then the third, and then the fifth. Next, what you're going to do is backtrack to the third, and we're going to play three, five, seven, eight. So notice I shifted off of my little finger to get to that 8th fret now. 
Now backtrack to the five, and you're gonna play five, seven, eight, ten. So now you have three segments here. Next we're gonna play seven on the B, eight on the B, ten on the B. And then we're gonna jump here to the high E string on seven. This has all been alternate picks starting with a downstroke, by the way. After that 7th fret high E string note, you're going to backtrack to the 10th B. And then on the 7th fret high E string, we're going to play this rhythm. 1, 2, 3. Again, that's kind of been a theme he established earlier down here in the solo. So I think it's cool to see that he carried that same rhythm out here. So 7th fret high E string once, then twice. Play the 10 on the E, pulling to 7. And then finish this lick out on the 10th fret B. Pretty challenging lick. That leads us up to the kind of bluesy 12th position phrase here. This one took a little bit of time to figure out. It's kind of a tricky lick to play too, and there's a lot of different ways you could pick it. You're gonna start off here on the 14th fret G string with a whole set bend, then play the 12 on the high E, the 15 on the B pulling to 12. Pretty standard blues lick. And then this is where it gets a little different. It's kind of an E minor 9 arpeggio. So after your little blues phrase, you're going to play 12 on the E, 12 on the B, 12 on the G. I hate doing those one finger rolls like that. Be sure as you do that to not just bar and mash them all, because then it sounds like a chord, right? You really got to make your finger kind of do the worm as you go through that, you know? I'm going from the knuckle to the middle of my finger to the tip of my finger keep those notes from ringing out into each other. Pretty tricky. And then you're going to play the 11 on the G, the 14 on the D, and then on the G string here we're going to play 11, 12, 14. Now you could pick this a lot of different ways. Um, initially when I started it I was just doing alternate picking going down, up, down, up. Actually that's a pull off right there. Down, up, down, pull. Up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. And that works pretty good. Uh, you could also do a three upstroke sweep right there. That might work better for a lot of players if you're not pretty familiar with the cross picking kind of thing. So yeah, you might want to try three ups right there. So after you land on that 14th fret G, we have this phrase. So this is me playing the 15th fret B, 14th fret G. 12th fret G, 11th fret G, and give it a half step bend. So that phrase is, let the bend down, play the 12 on the G, play the 12th B, and then play the 12th G again. Those two phrases kind of run together. Let me play that again. Let it down. And then the last phrase is this. That's my 15th B, 17th B, 14th high E, 15th high E, and then the 15th sliding to 17. It's a little vibrato at the end. And I guess it's worth mentioning too that on that last phrase, there's a little guitar harmony. It sounds like there's actually two harmonies on there. One of them sounds like it's doing 14th E, 15th high E, 17th high E, 19th high E, and then coming actually down here to the 15th on the B. So that way the last two notes form kind of a little D5 shape. Pretty cool. So let's play through that solo together here at a moderate pace, starting from the licks down low here at the bottom. Two, three, four. So there you go guys, a complete lesson on that super sexy solo in the name of our sweet Satan. Hope you guys enjoyed that one. I think it's a really, really cool solo to learn. And again, some of those licks in there are pretty tricky, especially for Ghost Fair. So enjoy getting into that one. 
Thank you guys so much for watching this week's lesson. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel. You guys can follow me on Instagram at Ben Eller Guitars and over on my Facebook fan page at facebook.com slash Uncle Ben Eller. That's how that goes. Thanks again for watching. Stay tuned for another sick lesson next week. Cheers, guys.